The first course today comes from Lily's in Louisville, Kentucky. The vivacious owner, Chef Kathy Carey, offers molded grits filled with a country ham mixture served with morel mushrooms. Then from San Francisco, Anne Gingrass offers an oriental rendition of quail. It is fried in a tempura-like batter, then served with a mandarin sauce containing blood orange juice. Finally, Robert Bruce prepares a rich chocolate torte from the Palace Cafe in New Orleans. Pay attention to his folding technique while preparing this souffle-like dessert. Lily's in the Cherokee Triangle of Louisville has become one of the most popular dining destinations in the city. Kathy Carey is a native of Kentucky and has built a national reputation on development of the region's cookery. Here's an example, grits timbo with country ham. The grits go into boiling salted water. Slowly adding the grits so they will not lump with a pinch of salt. Reduce my heat. Grits, the polenta of the south. And back to a simmer. Let's sit for about simmer about five minutes. These are organic yellow grits. These are unbleached, and we get these in California, health food stores. After the cooked grits have cooled down, I mold them very carefully into the muffin tin, pressing against the sides with my fingers to get an even width along the edges and to get uh, a nut of a, a, a bottom in the muffins so they will hold the filling which I will be putting in. The knife, you can go across because after they have cooled, carefully even it down so you'll have an even edge. They will sit evenly on the plate. Then with my hands, I pressed out the remaining grits to the diameter that I needed and used a cookie cutter to cut through to get the size I need to cover the top of the grit timbal. The filling includes softened diced leeks seasoned with a teaspoon of thyme and salt and pepper. Add my country ham that I've diced. Kentucky country ham, of course. this cook for a minute and then I will add my mustard and my cream. Half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I'll add my four tablespoons of heavy cream. And I'll reduce to get this nice and thick. Just about when the cream is all evaporated. Just about now. It's ready to go into the cups. On a cookie sheet, I'm going to fill the cups with the country ham leek mixture. It smells like the country. Great. And then cap it with the lid. And we'll go briefly into the oven to heat up the grits before I add the sauce. 400 degrees for about eight minutes. For the sauce, shallots go into melted butter. The 
Get a nice golden brown on those. Morel mushrooms are used. Morels are very much of a treat for us around Kentucky. We get them locally from Indiana uh, in about, uh, for about a six week period. I like to caramelize the shallots a little bit to pull out the sugar flavor. It's a much more intense flavor, I believe, to the morel sauce. But after your shallots have caramelized, I'm going to add the morels. Wilt them a little bit. Now I'm going to add my beef stock rich beef stock, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Reduce it down to half. It will intensify in flavor, and it will thicken up before I finish it with just a little bit of butter. And finish it with a little bit of butter, three tablespoons of butter. I like the sharpness of the arugula, the country ham, and the morels. Take the timbal, invert it. It's a surprise inside for the person that eats it. Deep fried leek tops finish the presentation. This was taped. Ann Gingrass and her husband David were cooking at Postrio, just off Union Square in San Francisco. Prior to that, she had worked at Wolfgang Puck's Spago in Los Angeles and Jeremiah Tower's Stars in San Francisco. Her entree is mandarin quail with blood oranges and greens. Semi boneless quail are cut into quarters. then marinated in red pepper flakes, garlic, and a little olive oil. This could be done a day ahead and held covered in the refrigerator. Okay. Eventually, the quail will be coated with a combination of rice flour, salt and pepper, and cold water. The sauce contains, among other things, plum wine. Also, white wine. Shallots, garlic, and ginger. This goes over heat and is reduced to about half a cup. Blood orange juice is added and this mixture is reduced by half. The sauce is finished with highly reduced and gelatinous duck demi-glace. This mixture should reduce enough to coat the back of a spoon. After reduction, butter finishes the sauce. Mm -hmm. 
A vinaigrette that will eventually dress the greens begins with a reduction of blood orange juice, chopped jalapenos, garlic, ginger, and shallots. After reduction, cool the mixture and proceed with the preparation of the vinaigrette. It's an emulsion containing red wine vinegar, salt and pepper, and olive oil. Mixed greens are dressed and blood orange segments are added. The plate contains endive leaves, blood orange segments, and the greens. The quail is seasoned with a little more salt and pepper, then coated with the rice flour mixture, then deep fried. Holding the little bones, place in the hot oil halfway down for about 10 seconds before dropping. This prevents sticking. Also, drop away from your body to avoid burning yourself. Really hot. Deep fry about five minutes or until golden brown. The blood orange sauce is brought to the boil and will coat the quail. See how it coats it like that? That's what it should be. At taping time, the executive chef at the Palace Cafe in New Orleans was Robert Bruce. A native of the city, he grew up influenced by his mother's cooking. He cut his professional teeth in restaurants owned by the Commander's Palace Brennan family. Here is his dessert, a chocolate tart and strawberry puree. First thing we're going to do, we're going to make the chocolate tort here, which is uh, 
a nice rich chocolate dessert, uh, and it's very simple to make at home. Uh, what we have here is uh, water, which if you want to water, water boil, boil if you want to water, if you want to boil water fast, hot pan will do it because it's immediately boiling. To that, we're going to add some sugar. All right, we're going to stir that in there. All we're doing is that, having that come to a boil. Now, over our double boiler here, we're going to add uh, dark chocolate and uh, unsweetened chocolate right here. We're going to put that over our double boiler. That we're going to add some whole butter. Okay, melt the butter and the chocolate together. Well, it doesn't take very long. You don't want to uh, you don't want to get the chocolate too hot because the cocoa butter will extract from it, and you'll have a uh, excuse me. You don't want the chocolate to get too hot because the cocoa butter will separate from it and it'll make it taste real chalky. Now what we've done here is quickly melt the chocolate. The sugar water is almost boiling. We're going to add this to the chocolate. It's going to make it melt a little bit faster. And we can actually take it off our double boiler and just fold the chocolate and the milk. I mean, fold. we'll just fold the chocolate and the butter together. Okay. Careful not to splash yourself. We're going to take six eggs and we're going to beat them in the mixer. Okay. Move our eggs. We're going to put our egg mixture into the larger bowl. It's nice and frothy. It's going to give the chocolate torte a nice aerated texture, which is very important with this dish. Over here, we're going to stir our chocolate and our water with our butter until the butter is melted. It's a little rich dish. There's no flour in this, but it's outstanding. A lot of this chocolate torte is technique. If you don't do the, if you don't use the proper techniques, it's not going to work. Be sure to use your rubber spatula to get all the good chocolate out of there. And to this, we're going to basically fold this together. Um, you want to try to retain the air bubbles and the egg, egg yolks. So uh, we just want to slowly swirl this until there are no little yellow ribbons in the chocolate. We have preheated our oven. And you can bake this in any type of dish you'd like. I prefer to use the small, round, soup terrines that we have here. You have to be very patient when you're baking. You can't rush it. It's not necessarily for me. <laughs> I'm patient, but it just takes too much time, this baking stuff. So we have our chocolate. It's nicely folded in with our egg yolks. Most of the swirls are out of there. Okay. And what we're going to do, okay, what we're going to do is uh, place our chocolate into our soup terrines. These soup terrines hold about 12 ounces, and you can do maybe four ounces or six ounces. It's, it's really up to you how you want it to, how thick you want it to be. And to that, we have our oven preheated, 350 degree, 350 degrees. We have some scalding water here. And we're going to carefully add the water to this because we want to bake this in a double bath. Double water bath. No. We want to bake this in a water bath. Um, that kind of maintains the, the heat a little bit more. Keeps the uh, souffle, I mean the chocolate from souffleing too much. We'll put that in the oven for approximately 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, after the after the torts come out of the oven, we put them in the refrigerator for an hour or two, let them ice down. Um, and then we're going to take our chocolate torte and uh, we're going to take our little paring knife and we're going to just carefully cut around it. Be sure to 
put pressure against the side of the soup cup, okay? And then we're gonna take our torch here. We're just gonna burn the bottom of it a little bit to loosen it up. If you don't have a torch, you can stick it in some hot water. Me, I like the torch, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna lift our plate up a little bit, set that on the side, and then just kinda plop, plop. Say a Hail Mary, and then it, there it is, okay? is we're going to garnish it with some strawberry puree, which has a little bit of simple syrup added to it. Thank you, sir. Okay. Just so that it looks cute, you know. Me, I like to keep the food inside the rim of the plate. If you want to, you can put it all over the rim of the plate if you so desire. We're gonna garnish that with some whipped cream, which we're gonna start in the middle. Then we're gonna go around, make a nice little design around the top of the chocolate torte. Okay, we're gonna garnish that with some shaved chocolate. Um, just a little bit on top like that. Okay. Powdered sugar on top of that. A little highlight. We're gonna put fresh mint. And we'll garnish that with some fresh berries. Very simple, very flavorful. Chocolate tort with strawberry sauce.